Welcome back. The National Commission for UNESCO has provided funding to the Special Education Unit and the Department of Sustainable Development for the undertaking of two major education projects. More in this report. A joint check presentation to the Special Education Unit and the Department of Sustainable Development marks the official start of two projects, providing reading support for students with print disabilities at the Lady Gordon Opportunity Center and strengthening the legislative and institutional framework for the promotion of science and technology. Each project receives a budget allocation of U.S. $20,000 under the UNESCO Participation Program for the 2020-2021 Biennium. Director General of the National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphoria, says the two initiatives are in keeping with UNESCO's 2020-2021 strategic priorities of increasing learning opportunities for persons in vulnerable situations with particular attention to crisis-affected populations as well as persons with learning challenges and harnessing sciences for sustainable development. That St. Lucia was successful in securing funding for three participation program projects at the first meeting of the approval committee, at a time when the organization is itself feeling the impact of reduced funding from donor agencies and as well the challenges faced by member states in meeting their own financial contributions to the organization, speaks volumes of the quality of the submissions that are made to UNESCO from St. Lucia. In that regard, I wish to congratulate the Department of Sustainable Development for these two excellent projects. The first project, providing reading support for students with print disabilities at the Lady Gordon Opportunity Center, seeks to improve access for students with dyslexia, low vision, or select mobility impairment to reading materials in digital formats that fit their specific learning needs. This project consists, among other activities, of a bookshare library that St. Lucia will be part of, which is the world's largest online system, as well as a braille-worn device, which allows a visually impaired individual to interact with a computer without the assistance of someone else. This project arose in a timely manner, considering that the country has been impacted by COVID and we've had to close schools yet again. That was Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert. Education Officer for Special Education, Dale Segist, says this project effort is invaluable. One of the challenges within the special education subsector is that reading is very challenging. It is difficult and there are many of our students who actually do not acquire that skill. But as I said before, one of the key components of achieving that goal is to provide appropriate resources. And the exciting thing about this project is that it will make literacy a lot more accessible to more students. The second project, an initiative to strengthen the legislative and institutional framework for the promotion of science and technology, has a key objective to ensure that science and technology becomes one of the vital bases for the development and growth of St. Lucia. Sustainable Development Officer coordinating the project is Berthia Thomas. The Department of Sustainable Development is currently collaborating with the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC, who is in a process of developing a national competitiveness agenda for St. Lucia. And one of the outputs of this agenda is a national science, technology, and innovation policy. And we're hoping that at the completion of this, we can develop through this project, its wife, so to speak, its partner, so to speak, the National Science and Technology Strategy and Action Plan. So what we have in the policy, we want to put it into action and guide our activities. Other initiatives attached to the project include the strengthening of the research agenda in St. Lucia, the continuation of the science and technology summer camps, and the hosting of the first ever St. Lucia Female Icons in Science, Technology, and Innovation Forum.
Portfolio Minister Honorable Dr. Rigobert says her ministry will spare no effort to see both projects through. We will continue to work assiduously to ascertain the successful implementation of both projects and to ensure that whatever resources are to be employed to, in, to realize the fruition of these, we will employ all the energy, resources, human capital that we have to so do. Noting that successful implementation refers to a project which meets all of its expected objectives and outputs and effectively undertakes its program of activities in keeping with the stipulated guidelines. UNESCO's project launch took place on Monday, 26 October 2020, at the Department of Sustainable Development. The Replast OECS Pilot Plastic Recycling Project is currently formalizing partnership arrangements with the constituency councils of Grosely, Viewfort South, and the Library Development Foundation and Caribbean Youth Environment Network to establish and operate designated points for the collection of plastic waste in the form of PET and HDPE beverage containers. To this end, the project conducted training on Saturday for close to 80 community volunteers from Grosely and Environs, Castries, Viewfort, and Labry. The Replast OECS project is funded by the Republic of France on behalf of the government of St. Lucia and is being implemented by Unite Caribbean Limited. Those persons will be trained, they would be exposed to the whole issue of plastic recycling in general, um, waste management, and also the specifics of the operations of the collection point. So this is our very first activity and the intention is to give them like a broad orientation today. Um, we will continue to have ongoing training. The next training session would be a more hands-on training session on the ground. Replast collection points are on schedule to start operations on November 7th, beginning with the Groselay collection point. The training was facilitated by Mrs. Geraldine Lendor Gabriel, a business development consultant and former general manager of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. We expect the participants to see this as also an opportunity beyond just this pilot project. We've referred to them as pilots. Pilots not just as part of a pilot project, but pilots who, if they steer this ship effectively, we will have on the ground a sustainable program which will address not just plastics, but goes beyond plastic waste. Replast collection points will operate from the Library Development Foundation grounds, the park adjoining the Aquatic Center in Rodney Bay, Grosile, the Viewfort Town Square, and in Castries at the Mega J Car Park and Serenity Park. Town Clerk of the Viewfort South Constituency Council, Ms. Kizzy Joseph, says the council, which is responsible for the management of waste in that constituency, sees the Replast OECS project as an opportunity to create a significant shift in attitudes with regard to how people perceive the problem of improper plastic waste disposal and their role in it. We need to realize that the less, the less waste we throw in the environment, then the better off we will be. The less waste that goes into, into the landfill, the longer the lifespan of the landfill. Leon Kuhlman, who will be volunteering at the Grosley Replast Collection Point, says as a water sports enthusiast, the issue of plastic pollution is personal. Actually, um, I took a trip uh, last year in the Great Barrier Reef, and I noticed that... It is not how it seems in the documentaries and on the History Channel. It's very dilapidated. The um, amount of species that you'll find down there is, is, is it's not like you can imagine. So I'm very happy to be part of this initiative to help change that outlook and improve our wildlife, especially in the marine sector. Volunteers automatically qualify for replast reward cards and to earn points for their service. Following the establishment and fine-tuning of operations at these initial four collection points, the aim is to upscale to other communities. Persons wishing to become Replast Collection Point volunteers can contact the project at recycleplastics at unitecaribbean.com. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. When we come back, Sports Classics, our special Moa Eritage Creole feature and the latest weather report. <laughs> 